how many how many here in the room are going to uh, prepare a manuscript for a journal in LaTeX? So I see like 20%. Um, and the others, were, what, what are you going to be using to, uh, to prepare your manuscript in? Is it Word? Is that what you're? I thought most journals wanted to use reversible text. Yeah. Is that, is that true? Or? So in, in astronomy, for instance, it's it, and in uh, math, it is really uh, LaTeX. So in math, for instance, all those symbols that I need, um, that is really best done in, in LaTeX. Um, um, I couldn't imagine trying doing that in, in Word, for instance. So this is, uh, and in astronomy, yeah, we use a lot of that too. And in physics, I think putting formula equations in, <clears throat> you can write it much quicker in LaTeX than in, uh, than in Word, from what I understand. Um, so I could spend uh, hours talking about LaTeX, not only because I started using it in 1990 already, um, but uh, there is so much to say. So I'm going, just going to touch on a few things. And, and if you have uh, specific questions, uh, you can talk to me afterwards or any time uh, in the future. Um, LaTeX is ancient. Uh, so I started using it in 1990, but it came out when uh, Return of the Jedi was launched and when the first cell phone came on the market. <laughs> And tech is even older, 1978. And uh, you can still use it the same way as in 1983. And try that with WordPerfect or uh, similar uh, uh, authoring tools. Um, so some, where is that oh, thing to slap? Yeah various ways to slap people. Um, so if you're uh, creating a manuscript in, in uh, LaTeX, um, depending on the um, operating system, you might need to install a different tool. Uh, if you're working on, in a Linux environment, like I do uh, on my computer, there would be Tech Life installed. Um, oh, cool. Yes. Um, on a Mac, it would be MacTech, and then there is also MicTech. Um, if you're working in Windows, that uh, some of them are interoperable, but um, that's a rough uh, um, way that you can uh, install it. Um, what you would be needing from your journal is a so-called journal style file uh, that prescribes how the journal wants uh, your manuscript to look, you can, with this, uh, make it almost appear as the final version that you might uh, see in the, um, um, in the journal itself. You can get really close. So if you're new to this, um, as I was, it was very helpful to have a sample uh, LaTeX file that the journal supplies and you can um, tweak it and see what, what happens if you tweak it. You can completely crash it too and then you have to go back to square one because LaTeX is not forgiving when it comes to those things. Um, and the only thing that I would like to touch upon that uh, you can't, um, that you wouldn't want to find out yourself perhaps is um, how you put in references. Uh, you can, for each time that you write a paper, start all over again with putting, collecting the references. But, and, and that's something that I did uh, for most of my papers, but from a lot of the graduate students in astronomy, I hear they collect um, all their references in a format, in a big a bit tech format. And that's a file, a dot bip file and you just keep on adding references that you collect throughout your career and 
when you are working on your manuscript, um, you have a citation in your paper, and then it just pulls from that vast collection of um, entries just the ones that you need for that specific paper, and you will never make a mistake in um, putting a, forgetting um, a number or a co-author. If one journal wants to list your first name first and then your last name or the other way around, it will just swap it. And that's all determined by your journal style file and uh, by another file that I'll point out. Um, oh, important uh, to get this bit tech, you probably already read it. You can get it from your reference managers uh, or from a search engine. Um, and um, I'll be happy to talk about that, where you can get those. Um, just very briefly, very briefly, because 80% of you are not using this. Um, here, this is where your bi bibliography enters your uh, article. This is where my bits, that's where those, uh, that huge list of um, citations uh, would be living, the bit tech uh, entries. And it pulls it from there using the style that that particular journal wants. And that's basically, uh, this I put in a uh, library guide. You can look at it in detail. Here are just three examples of such a bit tech entry. Uh, there's nothing uh, special to it other than that it's very dynamic in what it can contain. At least it should contain the author, the title, and uh, the journal. And whether it's a article, a proceedings, contribution, or a book, it can have different entries. And um, when I look at a citation to one of my papers, when I pulled it out 10 years ago, it had much less information than it would have now. Now it would have the DOI in it. Um, and much more uh, information uh, than in the past. Um, but it works with the minimum amount that you see here. Now, um, something that you couldn't do in the past is collaborate on a manuscript and not sending comments back and forth by email, cumbersome, or you sent the tech manuscript by email to somebody. Now you can at least put it in box and collaborate uh, from there with whoever is your group. But there is a new tool and the astronomy students have been using that in the past year, starting to use it overly. And that's a cloud-based later compiler and editor. And that's great. Um, it allows you to do commenting online and uh, you have your version control because all the previous versions before you delete it, the most important passage will also uh, still be there. So no more questions about who has the hot copy and, and who does not. Um, I would like to show how it works. I'll show you first a, just a one page. Here is pa paper that I'm working on. On this side, you see the raw LaTeX with all the, um, it looks almost like HTML. And here you see what it looks like after you've compiled it. And this is how it would look in the PDF viewer. This is how it could be in the, in the paper. Um, and each time that you make a change here, you can say recompile and then pop, you get your new, uh, the new version of it. And that's really practical. And then here you can share it with your, uh, with your collaborators. Um, they can also uh, work on it at the same time, maybe not always so practical. Here you see the individual files that uh, figures uh, that are in there or tables that you link to. Um, and yeah, since about two months I've started using it myself uh, um, because it is indeed much better than having to think like, oh, should I bring this, uh, should I bring my manuscript home on the laptop or should I just leave it on my desktop uh, in the office? Um, so if I would, if I hook up my own computer here, then I can show you how it works. In... 
in vivo. Let's see where am I plugged in. Can you see where I should to? Yeah. I'm almost done. <clears throat> so this one is pretty good. Oh, okay. It's really... Oh, it's, it's just two minutes. Okay. Yep. okay. So here you see the two projects that I have open at the moment. Um, and in here you can, it's loading the manuscript. And it's compiling it. It can take long, so sorry, this is 24 pages. Uh, um, but you can scroll. Okay, there's the manuscripts. Now, how can I make the scroll in here on this side? Okay, this is not going the way I had hoped. But one feature is uh, I can go down in the manuscript and then say, okay, now I want to see where I was in the in the raw version. And then uh, you can also here scroll down in there. That's what's not working right now. And then it shows you where you are in the PDF file. Really practical uh, stuff, I find. What is the 163 at the top mean? Oh, page 163? Uh, there are 163 complaints. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, great. Uh, but this is really much more useful than the complaints you get from LaTeX um, on your, that's installed on your desktop. So this is generated by Overly? Um, this is, um, so I've not cited this. I've mentioned it, uh, a citation to Smith et al. 2007, but I don't have it in my BIP file. That's what it is complaining about. Because only, I only put in one entry at the moment. But at least it tells you, it tells you all the, the problems uh, that you have and you can resolve it. And, um, okay. And the easy mistake. So luckily there are no red ones, that would be bad. But there are also things like an under full H box and that's is unfortunate, but nobody will ever see that. So, if I go back into the presentation, there's just one last slide. Yeah, so in Overleaf, all you have to do is put these two things in at the end, and it will take care of the whole, uh, of doing the BIP tech. Uh, it needs a few compilations of to get all the citations Right. First time you do LaTeX and then manuscript, then BibTeX manuscript, LaTeX manuscript, and then you have your final PDF. But with um, Overleaf, you don't have to do that. It just you click compile and it does all those steps automatically. And that's really uh, for software that started in 1983. That's a real uh, improvement uh, in 2018, 2019. And I have put this in a, in a library guide, and there you can see uh, basically what I talked about. It has the details that I was talking about. So you can find it whenever you need it. Okay, that's it.